In the latest episode of Build and Analyze, a popular podcast, um, Dan Benjamin and Mark Arment uh, discussed Flatter. We felt that uh, several things they talked about um, required further clarification. So I got up yesterday morning at 4.15 in London, uh, got a taxi, got a plane, got a train uh, to come to our Malmo office where most of the team is and uh, sat down uh, together with Linus, our co-founder, for a little chat. So here goes. We can introduce ourselves now. I'm Linus. I'm the co-founder of Flatter. I am um, C, the community guy at Flatter. Yeah, and a superhero at night. Mm. Yeah, we have some snippets from the actual podcast and we will play it and we will discuss it. And I think it's worth talking about Flatter briefly because a lot of people ask me about this. Flatter is a service that's kind of like uh, what TipJoy used to be and kind of like what Readability's payment system is, but for ev- for any kind of website or person on Twitter, I think. To be honest, we are actually completely content agnostic, so you can use it for anything. So any website or any project or you can use Software, it for your music, tomato plant if you want to. Cooking recipes, yeah. movies. But it's very popular for podcasts and software and blogs and Charities. Yeah, web content. Anything really? Yeah. But I think they have some kind of catch where like, they only withdraw the money from you if the person claims it, so that kind of uh, alleviates the unclaimed funds issue. The unclaimed yeah. funds. That came up a few times um, in the show. Yeah, because this is, this is, is um, one of the most complicated technical features of the system. There are a lot of systems out there that's, that supposedly could send money to any website or any person or anything, uh, but in reality it doesn't work because it's impossible to find the author of a website just by magic. We have two main use cases of that. The first one is that you sign up, you get an account, you put your button on your website or you're added to our catalog. You actually you, you say I want to use this and you kind of promote it if you want to and so on. And the other use case is that you find someone or something that you want to give money to uh, and then you can do what we call an unclaimed flatter. And an unclaimed flatter is the simplest way of explaining is is that um, it's an automatic flattering when the person actually joins. So there are no money involved whatsoever until the person joins flatter, and then you automatically flatter them. Um, so you put it in, in, in a pending state, uh, you can send a tweet or an email or whatever, write in a comment that it go to this page, sign up, uh, hook in your Twitter account, your SoundCloud account, or your GitHub account. Yeah. That's the three claim mechanics we have right now. And then you will get my flatter. Yep. And so once it, you then, let's say you flatter my Twitter account, I'm not on Flatter, then I go and claim it, uh, which means I create a, an account. At that point, the money actually passes on from you to me. Uh, so until yeah, I, so I do it, the, the money stays in your account. Yeah, That's exactly. That. While readability was getting a lot of buzz, a lot of people suggested that I, that I implement Flatter support, which would then bring me publisher payments in, you know, in a way without, um, without having to do it myself. So Marco, uh, for those who don't know, is the author of Instapaper, which is um, uh, a nifty little um, iOS app uh, to read stuff. The thinking there was that as people consume content through it, uh, they should be able to Flatter stuff. Uh, Marco said that um, he, for some uh, for a few reasons, different reasons, didn't want to implement it. But he's right in saying that Flatter would be a payment um, solution for, for such, uh, such kind of publisher for content aggregators. So as something to point out here is that Readability has a is paid subscription service. Uh, they, they claim that 70%, I think it's 70%, mm-hmm. right, uh, of the fee for the subscription service goes to the publishers. The, the, People have written what you read through readability, uh, but it's actually just aggregated on an account, and then the site needs to magically know that there are money there to collect. They need to sign up, they need to claim their website, and then they can get the money. So, um, lots of money just just, just stays somewhere. With, somewhere, yeah, like in space. Flatter, and that's what's what's. Um, Marco is talking about the readability unclaimed issues fund. So adding Flatter to a, a software like Instapaper 
would be opt-in, both for the people who wants to get money and for the people who wants to give money. Uh, and that's, this is something that has been done with podcasts. Um, so you add a uh, further information to your RSS feed, and then you use a podcast application that can read that, that extra information. And if you have people on both ends, people who wants to get money and people who wants to give money, then the system connects and works. I feel like I'm bothering people. So people are sending me payments on Flatter. So then I think people are bothering you because they are sending you money. The point is that um, if you think you're bothering people, but at the same time send, saying that the uh, they're sending you money without you ever advertising that you're on Flatter. Uh, I don't know, it sounds like they're voluntarily want to give you funds. Uh, yeah, and, and, and Marco has an account, he has never really, really told anybody how to. Yeah. Uh, and he don't want to bother people, but we can bother people for him. Yeah, go there. That's probably too close and it's probably he's, out of focus. But his um, username on Flatter is Instapaper. Um, I hope I wrote this note right. Go and Flatter him. Yeah, you can bother him by now. But, um, just for him. Yeah, we could we come back to Bum Cup later. We can discuss this more. Yeah, like every every month they email me saying your re your revenue report is ready, and of course they don't tell you what it is. So you have to log in, you go through all this crap, and then you and then you get to see, oh great, I earned, you know, two euros. Uh, Guilt, yeah, guilty as charged. Yeah, I think we should change that email. Yes. That's sad. The reaction figures in that email. Yeah. We will fix that. Yes. The Bum Cup. Oh, to the Bum Cup. And I thought it was weird, like, for the blogger to be asking for the money. Um, like, I felt like that was like holding out like a bum cup on my site. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I like the bum cup. This is a this is the thing that's come up comes up a lot of times, and it always comes up from the people who makes content. The people who consume content doesn't understand this argument at all. Um, and. A bum cup is something completely different because if you if you have a bum cup, if you really need money, then you go to meet people and say, "I really need money," and you don't do anything. You don't do anything for the money. You just beg. Uh, so flatter would be closer to a busker that actually performs something, and then a street also, musician. A street musician, sorry, uh, musician in the street now uh, that actually does does something, and then wants some money for you if you're kind. But that's not really true either because they are only there in the street to get money. And people who can uh, produce content on the, on the web produce content on the web to get money. That's for, for the vast majority they just do it for fun. So then it becomes more of a tipping uh, thing. But the tipping kind of says that you actually have bought something already like food and then it's so good that you want to pay even more and you haven't paid here so Actually, this is kind of the payment you do just because you want to. And then we are very far away from a bum cup. And the use case is very close to a like button or a tweet button with actual money on top. And then a tweet is, is just an enabling mechanic for uh, the fans to say to their friends that this is really good. We do love the word bum cup. Yeah, bum cup. That's, I want to do coffee cups that says bum. <laughs> no. It works for a small group of people, but I bet most people who get flattered uh, are in more of a similar boat like what I'm in, which is the amount of credit that I have built up there is so small that in reality I'm never going to collect it. Okay, so Marco, uh, we're going to call you also on this one. Um, you created a content and then you never did anything further with it. You didn't tell anyone that you have it. So the people who have flattered you actually are super engaged fans because they went and found out that you're on it and they gave you some money there. Uh, now imagine if, if you actually used it uh, in a bit more meaningful way, you put the button somewhere, told your followers that, hey, I'm on, I'm on Flutter, I'm using it to raise money for X. But people who are making decent uh, amounts of money on Flutter are actually quite transparent uh, about it and use it as an extra engagement mechanism with their, with their own follower base. Yes, the, the normal 80-20 rule applies. There's a lot that a person himself or herself can do to make it work for them. Yeah, and it's also important to acknowledge that most people on the web doesn't create content to live from. They buy it. Uh, but if they get some money, it's always good. They can maybe they can buy a new microphone or a guitar or pay for hosting costs. Uh, and that's that's 
happens in, in lots of cases. Of course, there are some people that actually live from this. Mm -hmm. Also, check your account. And ask, ask Dan to check his account as well. Yeah. For the people over there, maybe like Flatter there is their PayPal maybe in, in a way? Um, it's a it's an flattering comparison, if we may say so. Um, yeah, we're not quite there yet. No, um, and, and, and it's we're not we're not we we're, we're not PayPal, and we probably never will be PayPal because we have a different kind of product. We do micro payments, micro donations. True micro payments. Yeah, uh, yeah. one cent, twenty cent. PayPal says that they, anything below twelve dollars is a micro payment. That's bullshit. Exactly. Twelve dollars is, is a huge amount of money for lots of people in the world. Uh, on the in the world, but. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that a microtransaction of any kind needs to be uh, super, super, super simple, uh, like one-click simple, like flatter simple. It's not. It, it's not one of those situations. If you don't collect it, you lose it, though, is it? I guess you eventually will lose it <laughs> because yeah. money, money, you spend it. Uh, no, no, you don't lose it. It stays on your account um, until you take it out, or you can put it back into use. You can flatter. Uh, other things you like. Uh, yeah, so at least get your account and give the money to some nice charity we have. I think we've pissed off all of Europe now. And that's the end of yeah, the show. Yeah, I think we're done yeah. there. <laughs>